Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Do you have a swamp campaign planned? Maybe you're going to one of the nasty levels of the abyss? Well, I got your guide right here. Let's dive right into it. Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be making some swamp marsh-like terrain. So we're going to start off using some regular installation foam board you get from the hardware store. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to take a sharpie and make like a rough draft of where I want this water to go. Now I'm putting a mini in between the middle of them just so that there's plenty of clearance and the mini won't get stuck in between the, the water and the land here. So I added a few more here, just getting a rough draft. Now I do plan to connect all these bodies of water, but as you can see, the miniature looks pretty good in between all of these. So I think we're gonna go with that. So here comes my least favorite part. I'm going to use some sculpting tools and basically just go in and tediously carve out these bodies of water here. Now you could use a spoon, you could use pretty much anything, but the be I found the best way to do this is to just use some sculpting tools and to carefully and intimately go around and just carve out these bodies of water. It's gonna take some time, it's gonna be very messy, but I do recommend you have a shop vac handy. That will make your life so much easier, and it'll make your wife, girlfriend, whoever, very, very happy that you're keeping your workspace clean. We're all done here, big mess, abracadabra. Look at there, thank you, shop vac. So now we're gonna go in and put some texture. I just roll up some aluminum foil, and I'm gonna tediously again, go all over the foam here. Now I'm pressing harder in some places and lighter in some, and that's gonna create some different elevations and textures that you can use here. Neat little trick with the aluminum foil. It's like the oldest trick in the book, but it's the best for making very, very rugged and different elevation types. Highly recommend it. So here's what we got so far. This is the texture and also the texture of the waterways here where the water is going to go in. Now, like I said, I was just using that as a rough draft. I did went ahead and I carved out and connected everything. So let's move on here. Next, we're going to prime this. We're gonna use a mixture of Mod Podge and some brown paint. Now for the land areas, I'm taking like a sponge brush just so I can brush this on real quick. It seems to get into that texture a lot better than just a regular brush. Now I'm gonna to have to tediously go in with another brush to do the waterways here. But all I'm doing now, like I said, I'm just using that sponge brush and just going over it. It does cover this terrain quite well. So I'd recommend doing that for sure. So once that is done, we're going to go in with a darker brown. All I did was I kept the same mixture of Mod Podge and the same brown, but I added some black into it. Now, just because you add black into a color, it doesn't mean that it's gonna turn it black. It's still gonna retain the same color. It's just gonna make it a lot darker. Now you can do the opposite, make a tanner or tannish color with white on the opposite side of the spectrum. But my idea here was to make the waterways a lot darker than the drier parts of land. Mud tends to be a lot darker of a color than just sand or let's say wet earth because it's constantly under water. So we're gonna simulate that here and we're gonna go in and make the waterways a much darker, muddy type brown. Also to simulate where the water's flowing up on the land, I've brought that dark brown up on the sides. 
Now here, I'm gonna go in and do some dry brushing. Now, what I did was I went to the opposite side of the spectrum. I kept that same brown, but I added some white. I think it was actually some off-white, like ivory. And I made like this tannish khaki color just to give the sand some, some highlights here. Now, this process here, it, it is long and tedious, but we're, um, imagine the earth here as like a layering process. A lot of this is gonna be covered because we're going to go in with some flock, but it does add depth and layer to it. You could just prime this in brown and then throw some flock on it and call it a day. But some places you might miss of the flock, you want the earth to look realistic. This is unfortunately the only way to really do it is to layer it. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just going in almost like a wet brush technique here. My brush is not completely dry of the paint. It's still kind of dry. So it's just gonna mix in very well with the paint that's already on it. So you can use that technique in a lot of things, especially this. Once it's dried, this is what we have so far. It almost looks like a barren desert wasteland, but don't worry, it's going to look vibrant here in just a minute. So now we're gonna go in and start adding some flock. I'm gonna go in with a turf color first. I'm gonna add some Gorilla Glue here. You wanna make sure that your paint has dried before you do this. If you don't, it will ruin what you've done. So just a fair warning. So once again, with one of those sponge brushes, let's just spread out this PVA glue. Now you wanna make sure you have some good coverage here. I'm purposely making some splotches that don't completely cover this land only because I want some of that mud and earth to show through in this. And you'll see why it gives a good effect here once the flock goes down. So now very simple. You just kind of go over and sprinkle this flock on your PVA glue. Now this process could get very messy. And if some of it gets into where you painted for the water, that's okay. It's just going to add to your effect of like an algae nasty swamp. So now we're going to put some glue down and I got some moss from the floral store and we're just going to go through and put some vegetation all over this board while everything's drying. So just a little bit of Gorilla Glue and all I need is just a little splotch to put this moss down. Now, like I said, you can get this moss from either Walmart, Hobby Lobby, any hobby store that does floral. And I'm just gonna put this vegetation down just in random spots around the water. If you think about a swamp or marsh, there's a lot of vegetation that grows around the water here. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just trying to mix and match it so that nothing looks about the same. Here's that almost the final product of the vegetation. As you can see, I'd put everything in almost random spots, but I mix and matched everything. So let's turn the detail up a notch. I'm gonna use some of these logs that I've got for some project and ended up not using them. So I had them laying around, so I figured, what the hell, let's do it. I put some Gorilla Glue down and then I wasn't thinking, and I put the Gorilla Glue back down over this flock here that was trying to dry, and it didn't want to stick very well. So I had to kind of finagle this down. <laughs> uh, I probably should have used maybe some tacky glue. That would have probably been a little bit better. Now from Woodland Scenics, they have this static grass and it looks very cool to use for weeds. It's almost a consistency like hair. So what we're gonna do here, I felt like they were too long, so I'm gonna cut them in half. 
And once I cut them in half, more Gorilla Glue. Now you can also use Tacky Glue here, which I will use later on. And it, I actually probably should have used the Tacky Glue for these weeds. Only simply because when, they, when it dries, it dries clear. Sometimes if you have a big glob of this glue, of the Gorilla Glue, it dries white, which we don't want. So that's another mistake I made. But that's why we're here to learn, right? So I'm just going to set up these weeds in different random assortments here. And here's the final product that you can see everything's still trying to dry. And I actually switched to some tacky glue only because it dries clear. So once that's dry, we're going to go in with some scenic cement. And this is from Woodland Scenics. And what it is, is just watered down PVA glue, but when it dries, it's hard as a rock. So that's going to seal in all this flock and all that vegetation so it protects it. It just basically gives it another layer. And that, of course, gets Critical Crix's approval. So now for the fun stuff. We're going to go in and use some resin here. So I got this Art & Glow resin, and there's the hardener. Just a disclaimer while using this stuff, you want to put the exact amount of resin and the exact amount of hardener into a container here. If you don't, it's not going to cure correctly and it tells you the directions on the back. So I wanted to go over the top of this build and I'm going to use every bit of it just so I know that it's going to harden and it's gonna cure correctly. Now this stuff does tend to be kind of expensive. I wanna say it was about $20, $25 for both of these bottles of the resin and hardener. You could use like some Elmer's glue or something, but you're not gonna get the same added effect that this resin does. Sometimes for your builds, it is a very good investment to make it just look that much more realistic here. But that's ultimately up to you. There are other guides out there to make water tutorials. So check them out. This I find to be the most realistic and awesome way to make water. So as you can see, I put all of the hardener in there. And now I'm going to go in with some green ink and I'm just going to put a couple of drops into this mixture. Now, after I put these drops in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir this up with a popsicle stick. Now, what you need to do when you stir this, don't just stir from the middle, take the sides of it and scrape the sides of the mixture. That's gonna make sure that you get it all in there and all mixed up and all curing properly. Because if you don't, it's not gonna cure. Oh, my favorite part of the build. I did add a little bit more ink to the mixture and a little bit of brown just to make it look like a nasty, dirty water. So I'm just carefully going through and I'm just pouring this little by little into the stream of the swamp here. Now a little bit did get on that vegetation there, but that's okay. It's just gonna add to the effect. Now I'm just not dumping it all out here because what will happen is this resin will, it will expand almost and it will flow out. So if you put a humongous glob in one spot, it might overflow. So just be very careful, be very mindful, and take it very, very slow here, or you're going to have a mess. And uncured resin is an absolute mess. But look at how beautiful that looks once it's done. Man, oh man, this build is getting better and better and better, and it is a lot of fun. So once that is fully hardened and cured, I'm going to go in with some more green ink. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going on the sides of the water and once that dries, it's going to dry opaque and I want it to look opaque 
because it's supposed to be murky swamp water. The green is also going to simulate algae growth next to this, the banks of the land here. So that's what I would recommend doing. You could use watered down paint, but inks work a lot better. So the last part of the build, gonna go in with some of these cattails I got from the hobby shop. Also, I found these wire trees, foliage branches, and we're gonna use our tacky glue. Basically, I just put some of that tacky glue on one of the cattails and just stick it in the foam in random spots. It'll dry, it'll, it goes on white, but it's gonna dry clear. And we're gonna do the same thing with the trees. And you can put it as many or little as you want. So let's look at those beautiful action shots, guys, and enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day.